So here we are. You join us at Rutland Water, home of wildlife and water birds. And who's that behind the tree? I wonder where you were. Uh, I told you I'd meet you there. It would have been some length this morning. There you go, swam across that. Whew, quite the day already. I can only do depths. <laughs> That's because you didn't get your bands. I've got all my bands. So, today, it's going to be exciting. We're going to go and see some toys. And you guys can come along for the ride. We're going to see a shop, and then we're going to see an awesome collection. So if you're into toys like me, you're going to love this show. So stick with us. Let's go and see what we can find. Only here on planet Earth. Hey, Gav, stop. For something you don't see every day. Do you know, I think he's one of the rare ones. Wow, look at this, what a room. So brilliant, you're gonna beam down to a planet where nobody's ever seen you before, wearing it out with a Belisha beacon on the top of it. So here we are, back, here we are. back in England, back in the old van. Yeah, excited today, Matt. In the big one. In yeah. the big one, yeah. Um, we're gonna see Gav and Stella at Lost in Toys. I told you it was gonna be a Stella trip. Yeah. <laughs> Now, you've got a long-standing relationship with Gav, haven't you? I have, yeah. Not like in the biblical sense, but yes. Yeah, We're you're, good friends from yeah. a long time ago. You deal, you deal backwards and forwards. We do a little, bit of, a, little, a little bit of dealing. He's very shy about being on camera, though, so he's not going to say much. He's going to get in there. I know he's like, he'll just go, yeah. He'll be like startled. <laughs> but Stella's lovely and Gav's lovely, and they're both... I'm just, I'm like, I can't wait to see the shop, because it's been, like, probably... When he first opened, I went there, and now I'm going back again. He's affectionately called the Clanger. So, because he gets very excited and at a toy fair, and he's from West Bromwich, which means his accent's off. It's crazy. Um, so the Clanger as in the little uh, mice creatures that lived on the yeah. moon. Oliver Postgate. <laughs> so if you listen to him from a table over at a toy fair, it's quite busy. A lady was trying to understand what he was saying. He was and uh, I said, it's all right, I speak Clanger. And from then on, it was, he was called the Clanger. The Clanger. Mm. Right. And he's happy with this uh, moniker that you've given him? Um, let's, let's, let's pretend he is, <laughs> yes. But well, he's if he's not, he's going to find out about it now. <laughs> yeah, he's a lovely bloke. We've done loads of deals over the years. So Gav will do, I know that I can always buy off Gav. And Gav's always going to try and do me the best deal. And it, it goes back both ways. That I would always try and look after Gav. There's stuff that I know that he likes. I know that... There's certain things that Gav will like. I'm expecting to see some six million dollar man stuff. In fact, I've got a little surprise for him in the back that I want to swap in with him. Do a little part exchange. A very favourable deal that will be for him, let me tell you that. Okay, well, can't wait. Let's get there. So we're finally here at the lovely little town of Kings Winford. Now Kings Winford, of course, is famous for, well, absolutely nothing. After trawling the internet, I found out the bass player from the Wonder Stuff. Rob Jones that sadly passed away, he was from Kings Winford. Also, a TV special effects producer called Paul Barnett, responsible for such amazing things as Super Size versus Super Skinny, he was from here as well, and that's it, that's it. But he is famous for Lost in Toys, which is here, and he's quite wonderful. Let's go in and see what it's about. Hey, Gav, Stell, excited to be here. Wow. It's lucky, I've only been here once before, you know, once before. So, Gav, lost in toys, the beautiful little town of Kings Winford. It's a village. Village, is it a village? Village. I thought, I didn't want to say anything. It felt like it was dressing itself up as a town, but it is actually a village. Yes. Makes you quite posh, really, doesn't it? Um, not really. <laughs> so, look at how beautiful this is. Now, tell me, this isn't for sale, is it? No, definitely not. No, no, I knew that would be. See, I know Gav very well. Swiss Army knife to play. Not for sale. There'll be a bit of that going on. Hopefully there's not too much of that going on though. No. You have been better. Is any of this for sale or is this yours? No, all for sale. All right, all right. that is a good sign. That is a really good sign. I've actually brought something down for you, Mr. Gav. Great. Which you haven't got. So hopefully we can sort out a little swap deal on something because I can already see a few things that I like the look of. Let's get about it.
I don't know what it is about the West Midlands and uh, V stuff. But do you remember back on Toy Spon Tour 1, we went out, <laughs> we had that epic battle over the V figures. And um, this, I think, is from that same collection, is it not? It is. There we go. There we go. And we've got another. Wow, look at that. That's like the A-Team gun, but the V version of it. That is so cool. Oh, that's face. These are nice. 495 for something you don't see every day. When I say I don't see every day, I think this might be the only one. Flip it out, that's cool, man. How much is that one, now? I think that one is 595. That's nice. Beautiful. These are the, I don't want to sell them bits, aren't they? Oh, that's so cool. Not just one, though. We've got two. Look behind it. Three. I mean, I've, I think I've only ever had about two of these, three of these in the shop, and Gav's got four on this shop alone. It's amazing. Did these all come from a shop stock lot, Gav? All different places. Um, all different but, places? But all shop stock. Well, I've already found some things that are definite grails, definitely above my pay grade, because I don't think when I've got to swap Gav, he's going to swap in for any of those. But there is some stuff that I do like the look of on here. So I'm a sucker for a pretenders. Long tooth is a particular favourite of mine. Now I know some people don't like Trump pretenders at all. I, I'm one of those people that do like them. They're rather cool. What's nice about him though, really, really nice condition on his tusks. He is about, I reckon I'm guessing he is about 90 quid. 95, there we go. Which isn't a bad price for one that's so, so clean. These really are lovely. He might be coming home with me, we'll see. Aha! Look what I've dragged out of one of the cabinets. HG Toys Book Rogers Galactic Playset. Now, this really is a toy with bang for your book. Pardon the pun. We went to see Jonathan Ross, didn't we, last year? And we had another version of this, the normal version of this, which is, I think, very, very cool as well. And this one is exactly the same. The box is orientated differently. This is landscape as opposed to the portrait version of the box that I've got. But these toys are extremely delicate. They are lovely, really, really lovely toys. I really rate these, there's a lot to like about it. The figures are like the ones you found in the Adventure 2000 series of Matchbox. And there are so many issues that can happen with these. Finding one in nice condition like this one, sealed. It really is the only way to find an unbroken one. Lovely, lovely toy. Highly recommended that one. So, I love the black hole. The black hole figure line, however, the 12 inch line, is not a very good line, I'll be honest with you, because the faces just go completely pale, completely white. These though, for this sort of era of figures, are in amazing condition because the faces haven't totally whited out. Now, is there a secret trick to that, Gav, or is that just... No, it's just... Pure luck. luck. <laughs> pure luck. So yeah, we can't give, even give you any advice as to how to store them. So if you guys know out there that you store, store them this way and their faces won't go white, then please tell us, because you're telling us something we don't know. But yeah, somehow through chance, this lot have survived to be okay. And I especially think these ones, the Pedigree Toys boxes ends a bit of a kudos to it as well. But yeah, lovely, lovely figures these are. And I, look at the face. I mean, the sculpt on that for the time. And he looks like a Harry Booth as well, doesn't he? Looks like he's a guy that does your bins. <laughs> he does. He does so. Look at him. Yeah, I love that, mate. Yeah. <laughs> now, the original Indiana Jones line was kind of recreated, as it were. Kenner, Hasbro, decided that we're going to recreate it, and that's one of the new modern reissues. The original figures are fetching some good money now, and I'd like them. And over in the UK, we don't see them very often. But this sort of stuff's everywhere. But I'm rather fond of these, because this was a line that sort of came out with the reboot of the films, and I really like them. I think they're really good. And they're going up in price, these are. So if you see these cheap anywhere, my advice is pick them up, because they're only going one way. And I think just as a standalone figure, they're really rather good. 
Really cool Lone Star Star Skin Hutch machine pistol set. This is really cool. Always hard to find with this. This bit, this sleeve, is always ropey. It's always gone. And on one in this condition, I'm quite surprised to find one on. 100% original, really, really nice. But there's something even more exciting up here, in my opinion. The official police set. Now look at that, that's really cool. Thomas sold a toy, so not as well made as the Lone Star set, in my opinion. And just basically a really cheap set, but look at the work that went into it. Look at the artwork. It's lovely, it's really, really nice, really well thought out. For such a cheaply made toy, I mean, look at the plastic tat in here. I mean, it really is as well, you know. But as a actual item on your shelf, that looks fantastic. The Robbie. Yeah. The Robbie's 595. Right. What about the B9? That is about 300 quid. Yeah. I can't afford that because that'd be for me. It'd be really naughty. For me at the moment, I'm more of a 30 quid guy than a 300 guy. <laughs> So I'm kind of, I'm kind of, if it's for the shop, it's different. I'm allowed to spend that sort of money. But if, uh, no, if I spend £300 on talking to myself, my wife will just go. <laughs> I do like D&D &D stuff. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons line are something I like, and I sell them quite well in the shop. A couple of peaceful I would like to get out of here. How much is the Dragoon? I think i will put 45 on it, maybe. I love what somebody's done with this, look. As a kid, they've gone like that. Yeah! <laughs> Got some paint and pointed it red. So there's been some stabbing done. He's a bad one. He's a wrong one. Back in there. How much is he? Five. Do you know, I think he's one of the rare ones. Robocop. Look at that. One of the most violent films ever. And there we have the... There you go. <laughs> Hiya! Yeah, okay. I quite like it. I've not seen one for a little while. Okay. Let's put him on there. 125. 125. Get a little bundle of things going. I like to get a bundle going. It's good for the dealer because he gets a big chunk of money at once. It's good for the buyer because you get a bit of things a bit cheaper than you want. And it means I can offset some of the things I'm buying for me. I oh, suck for a headmaster, this is Brainstorm, he's got no guns, he's a bit funny coloured, but he's 25 quid. Um, no, I mean, I'll chuck him on the pile. I could chuck him on the pile, couldn't I? Yeah. Headmaster's made by Transformers, really cool, because the head pops off. And there's a little man, look, he's a little man. So you can play with him, and it meant that you've got different possibilities with this, so when you transformed him, Gonna make a really terrible job. I'm, I'm just gonna get you to the cockpit. Look, he went in the cockpit. Look, he went and sat in there so he could have his sandwiches in peace. There you go. So this is the era that bore us Fortress Maximus. How cool is that? Right, we'll put him on the pile. Uh, and also, we talk about Moondancer. Now, you said a fiver, didn't you? I did. And every day's a school day because I went, I'm sure that's one of the rare ones, Gav. So I'm going to offer you 25 quid for him. Thank you very much. That's and I still kind. think that's quite a steal for me. If that's all right with you. That's great, thank you. Cool, because that is who I thought it was. He's Moondancer and he's in nice condition. He's got an unbroken crotch, look. So there you go, very nice. Good thumbs. Shame he hasn't got his stuff, but you know, can't have everything. Nice pickle. Right, how much is booby tusks? <laughs> Let's have a look. New Adventures of He-Man had very few figures that I love. But however, this guy, I quite like. Glad it's not just me. 12 quid, is he all right? Look, I've got to buy him, haven't I? 12 pound. You've called him Booby Tusk, what's his real name? I can't remember. That's why I always call him the name, because I can never remember. There's so many names of toys, you're always trying. That was the cabinet. There's so many names of toys that you sort of, you get into that thing of going, and people will be screaming at it because they're into it. But I just always, when I see him, I just think he's a great figure. And I can sell him because I'm genuinely enthusiastic about him. I think he's just fantastic. Look at that. What's not to like, really? Gold plastic. <laughs> and, you know, got a party piece. Is he always like this when he comes into your shop? Yes, <laughs> always. 
Very, very cool. Tron, I think this was San Diego Comic Con. Might be, might be wrong on that, but I believe it was. It's really, really hard to get, because I tried to order one. One of the few things I saw when I, when I saw them coming out, I went, wow, they're amazing. And um, yeah, never got one. So this is really cool. Is that for sale? It is. Oh, how much is that? 150. Wow, 150 quid for the toy of your dreams, people. If you want it, get here and get it bought. So, back in 1999, the universally acclaimed Star Wars movie, Episode One, was released. Everybody loved all the characters in it. I mean, you got this guy. Uh, y all right. So or it wasn't universally, universally met with acclaim, was it? But the Comtech readers were what you got. That was the no novelty with your figures. Listen, the explosive words and sounds of the Star Wars Comtech system. Imagine yourself in the movie. I sense a disturbance in the force. You got a little chip. And with that chip, you could, they could swipe that and then basically would say the characters' phrases from the film. And they're the original shop displays. Aren't they cool? I'm told, not for sale. Neither is he. And unbelievably, neither is he. We've got some rather, rather wonderful turtles up here. There's not loads of turtles in here, but look at this. There's some crowd pleasers in here. Look at that. We've got Wolfman, Leo. We've got Dracul Don, really, really cool. I love these dinosaur ones. They're amazing, the cave turtles. Really, really cool. I do like them a lot. They're really, no, really like them. How, how much are the cave turtles? Not sure. Not sure. <laughs> uh, Mid-year. <laughs> Get them out and negotiate. Get them out and negotiate. It's cool, isn't it? Very Flintstones-esque, that one. You can tell the influence there, can't you? Very Dino. Okay, a little bundle going now. And also, oh, this is a great toy. See, they made this, they made this Karate Kid line, and you, you had to, I think in the film, was it Mr. Miyagi? He, um, this is easy, because they made this for kids, so it's easy, right? You just got to, uh, 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 uh. Is there, is there a technique? And he caught me on a nipple. Is there, is there a, ah! <laughs> I got him, I got him. Oh, fourth try, there we go. That was brilliant. Made yeah. for children. Yeah, that was so easy. I was looking the other way, I'm not sure I actually did get it. I did, I did, how dare you. <laughs> I still want to buy it, despite the fact it's a child's toy, I can't work. What are they? No idea. Came from Sandown. Yeah. I presume back in the day you did just, you know, obviously it's a shop display. Yeah. And you just bought one at a time. Wow. How much is the display? I could do that for 30 quid. Yeah, having that, that's cool, man. So I, I used to, I know, I know, but I did actually used to surf. So before you say anything, that's a bit of me, bit of surfing, bit of history, kind of stuff you'd have bought in a cheap shop at the seaside all those years ago, and now it's coming home with me. To be fair, the paint application on these isn't the best. I did think some of them were actually wearing shower caps. <laughs> now, time for some hefty negotiation. And by hefty negotiation, I mean, you know, I like this Wild Stallions pack, picked them out. And I would say I picked your worst one. You know, you've got two, which is greedy. I like the pretenders. There we go, there's Chrissy Hind there. Oh, all different kind of pretenders. Anyway, there we go, Brainstorm. His Headmaster, no guns though. Wolfman, Moondancer, Party Trick. He or she will not be named. And the Cave Turtles. Can you work me out your very, very best price on that as a bundle, please, along with my nemesis, the fly clutching trick? Okay. Some heavy lifting going on now, people. Okay, Joe. Yep. Your total shop price is 712. Yep. Okay. So. 
could you stretch to 600? That's very fair, mate. Yeah, let's do that. Thank you. That's very, very good, mate. Very, very good. Happy with that. 600 pounds. And I've got an item to show you in the car, which may well come off that total as well. Fantastic. Back in a moment. Right. Let's go and get this lovely item out of the back of my van. One Oscar Goldman. Now, I know Gav hasn't got one. This is one, it's quite nice. It's got a few box issues. The toys, pretty much unused, I think. Gav will be able to tell us exactly. He knows which ones had brown ties and which ones. I don't know. The briefcase works. And let's face it, with one of these toys, you want the briefcase to work. I brought a friend. Lovely. Mr. Oscar Goldman and his briefcase are here to see you. Now, I'll be honest with you, the box has a few issues. Right up. Oh dear. Extremely faded on front. Yeah. But he's lovely. And he's got a sparkling personality. Have a look, see what you think. Is his briefcase intact? His briefcase is intact. Now, you were saying something about the ties that it's got around him. Yes, they're correct. All oh, right, okay, good. Cool, unbroken. There we go, it's what we like. It's all about the briefcase, people. It's like putting Milan Fashion Week in here now. And he's in lovely condition, isn't he? He's yeah, nice. He is good. The box isn't great, but he's nice. The box is hammered. Well, all right. It's not the best. If you're not enamoured with the hammered box. But as a figure alone, he's great. Yes. So... So you're jeeing this up? Yeah. <laughs> I'm riding this all the way into town. <laughs> you are. Really making this sound expensive. Well, it doesn't have to be for you. Okay. Bought him in France, he owes me more than he should, because I was, you know, the, 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 the wine, the garlic, <laughs> it had all gone to my head by that point. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, I can do you a good deal on him, mate. Okay. And I know it's something you've not got at the moment, so it'd be a nice, you can trade round, trade up, you know, I know what's going to happen. The outer box is going to go, he's got an outer box somewhere and he'll move that around and put that with it, because that's a nice doll. What? Should we do a straight swap? We're sorted on this lot. What do you want to swap it for? You do not want to take off the top of this, or...? Well, you can either that, or you can swap me something else. Well, up to you. What have you got your eye on? Well, what haven't I got my eye on in this wonderful little shop of dreams? So I've spotted something, now that my budget on this wouldn't stretch to that lovely Space Ranger action man, although that was what I first went for. So I've had to make and make do with Otho the Obnoxious with Loathsome Lizard. Um, I'm not sure which one I am in this sort of role. <laughs> I think I might be Loathsome Lizard, I don't know. <laughs> but no, it's lovely. He's nice, he's not an amazing grade, but Beetlejuice stuff's cool and uh, I don't see him very often, so yeah. I think that's a fair trade, preferential with Gav, and Gav's really looked after me on this stuff. Gives me something different to take to the shop. Happy day. So if you haven't been here before, you need to come down here. Kings Winford is wonderful. Town, village, village. You'll always get a warm welcome of Gav and Stella. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Had a wonderful time. Thank you very much. But now we must fly. Let's go. So back in the van. Don't need me readers anymore because I'm not on the camera. Wasn't that great? I definitely need mine, I'm driving. Yeah, it was, it was that amazing. Was a lot of I didn't really expect you to buy so much stuff. <laughs> Neither did. I kind of like, I kind of had that thing, of, and I don't think I felt, I don't feel like I've bought a lot, but it was kind of like... Is it being back in the UK, are you feeling like nostalgic for I'm food? just excited. I've gone to see a friend, and it was good to see him, and like, I'm now on the way to see an amazing toy collection. So I'm excited, I'm just, I don't know, I'm, I'm like an, an overexcited baboon in a, Railroad trailer full of bananas. Well, on that note, I've got a banana to eat later on. So, what um, what collection are we seeing? Where are we going now? We're going to see a man called Gary, Gary Bartram, and he has got a collection which I, I I view it as quite inspirational. It's one that I really like. What he collects, what he has, 
I will get a little bit green-eyed monster so because there are of, things what he's got sort of like thing? basically turn of 1970s, 1980s TV and film related sci-fi is kind of how I describe it. So Battlestar, Book Rogers, that sort of stuff, Black Hole, yeah. Star Wars, all that sort of stuff. It's As very we, space toys that we've got. Well, there's, gonna, there's gonna be more than that, but that's kind of like a... That's your intro. Yeah, it's, he's, he's got some good stuff, man. And also I've arranged to buy a few things off him as well while I'm there. So I'm quite looking forward to that. And I've got a couple of things that we bought in Italy for him. The Beagle has landed. Always crossed safely. What? Checked both ways, didn't I, there? Cool. Hello, Gary. You Good to see you. See? I've set the dog off. I'm sorry about that. I it's have right, a habit of doing that. This is Sandy. Named after Ooh, a Libby Newton John's uh, character in Greece. Oh, really? Yeah. Very good. Where are your hot pants? Where are your hot pants? Were well, they hot pants? Like leggings, weren't they? Black, Lycra. really. Apparently, should be stitched into them. Well, tell me about it. Some of my clothing these days. Come on. I don't know why I know that. Right. Wow. Look at this. What a room! This is a so Palitoid Death Star. There. These are one of the. This is lovely. These are the Drew Tag cases. These are lovely, beautiful things. He does them for all sorts of ranges, and uh, yeah, lovely things. Very, very nice little run. You've got some unusual ones in there as well. There's a, there's a, a, there's a blue snag and a, and a droid uh, factory R2 in there as well. Yeah, yeah. Got all sorts of great stuff. Oh, man. Now, that Dukes of Hazard car, I do love that. I love Dukes of Hazard. It was one of those things as a kid. Obviously, now it's very unpolitically correct to have the um, flag on the roof of anything, so they can't remake this stuff. So it's one of its time. But as a show, I liked it because it was just two guys in a car hooning round, and that was that was fun. So what, what, what drew you to collecting then, Gary? How long have you been collecting, for a start? So when I was a kid, I got into computers at the age of about nine or 10. Mm. And we, I had to, because my com you couldn't upgrade computers in those days. Yeah. So to get into, I used to run out of memory, um, but the computer wasn't, powerful enough for me yeah. when I was programming. I've got one like that as well. Yeah. So my, my, I had to sell my toys at car boot sales to help right. fund the next computer up. Yeah. So then I didn't have any toys when I got to be an adult. Mm. So when I started getting some money, I used to go around car boot sales about the age of 19, 20 and start buying some stuff back. And then uh, as an adult, I had my own letting agency and I sold that in 2016 and then things got a bit crazy after that. They're all cut up Star Trek comics on the wall there to make wow. a bit of a feature wall. And this room just had two cabinets in it and the wall with some stuff in it. And then, yeah, last seven years, it just kind of got a, a little bit crazy. Yeah, not a bad thing, mate. It's not a bad thing. It's been enjoyable. You've got some great stuff in here. I love this Flash Gordon set. So the set of four is always something there was a set of three became available the other day. I've not seen a set of three. Yeah, deal or, deal or no deal. And Ming's shuttle above it as well. Yeah. Which is from the same range. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that because that's, as a toy, it's not very good, is it? No, it's very <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that. I mean, as a toy, Ming certainly does. This, this <laughs> is terrible. But so, like, I mean, basic. I mean, look at that. That is, you know, not far off just vac formed, but it's super cool at the same time. Done well to survive. Ah, six million dollar man. That old favourite just turning up again. We've just been and uh, swapped in a Oscar Goldman actually. Oh, the V figure down the bottom. See, another one that's similar. We've just seen some V guns. Now we've got the figure. Another thing we saw at Gavs was the Airwolf uh, Cox. Uh, um, motorised helicopters and now we've got the one that's my particular favourite the original Ertl release which is lovely and look at this run of black hole three and three quarter inch behind there absolutely fantastic stuff I love these mash figures they're a real favourite of mine I mean like as a show it was brilliant but the film as well I love the film the Dark yeah. Solar, that was a great film
yeah, I have fond memories of watching that with my dad. But my eyes are drawn to the Book Rogers. Definitely drawn to the Book Rogers. The Starfighter, it's just so tough to find nice like that. But it's something about that ship, it's so iconic. It's notable that this is the Corgi version of it. And they first released that, again, like the actual proper toy, and like in the show, without this bit. But can you imagine how sharp that would have been and used as a weapon against another kid? Yeah, you'd win every battle, but yeah, you'd probably be in prison. So they quickly dispensed with that and put that in instead. So it was a little bit less lethal. Book Rogers sunglasses. You, you were the coolest kid on the street if you were wearing them. <laughs> Imagine that. These are really nice, these Ziga toys, Book Rogers, and they did Tiger Man as well. And that was all they did, that was the whole range. They had more planned, but unfortunately, before they could, they went. But really lovely, lovely toy line. So Star Trek was one of the first things I ever collected. Um, the, the first thing would have been Star Wars trading cards. See, I'm not a Trekkie at mm. all. I like the toys, but I always like the weirder end of it because they fit in quite nicely with my Tomland stuff that I collect. Yeah. So the alien is fantastic. On the left there, I love him. Nice head sculpts for early 70s. I think Miko did a good job there. That AHI Phaser Ray gun. I've only ever had the packaging for that. I've never had the gun. Second AHI thing I've seen today, which I actually wanted. Yeah, Battle of the Planet stuff. Always a favourite of ours here on Toys Pond Tour. Always tempts me in. A lovely, lovely thing. And the Star Trek three and three quarter inch movie line figures. They're a great line of figures. No accessories though. No accessories and no holes in their feet. Yeah. Which is unforgivable. Yeah. If you're trying to stand them up. It's very hard to stand. So I actually was going through stuff. I actually found these, which I'd forgotten I had. I don't believe there was any other toy line that had a red impulse in it no. from Battle of the Planets. That's the only one I've ever seen of that for sale. And apart from the uh, the general guy who was in charge of them, that's a whole set of them there. So Sandy and I were just chatting about items that we hadn't seen on Toys Tour because she's a big fan, watches all the shows. Um, and we decided that this was definitely one of the things we hadn't seen on Toys Tour before. It is uh, just as ridiculous as it looks on the box. It is canon now, because it's in Star Trek uh, Lower Decks, the cartoon. It's canon. Look, that's canon. Bust it. So, you know. That's amazing. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to fit anybody here. No, it might fit Sandy. Sandy? Yeah, but very much like sort of Mandalorian, where they started putting in the troop transporter and that to make those toys canon. Yeah. They've done the same with that, with Star right. Trek Lower Decks, and it's in one of the episodes of Star Trek Lower Decks. So brilliant. Decks. You're going to beam down to a planet where nobody's ever seen you before, wearing a hat with a Belisha beacon on the top of it. Yeah. Whoop, whoop, we're here. Amazing. I, I'd wanted that for a long time. I had to get that from Italy. Um, it's just, it is the most ludicrous toy ever. It, all the ludicrous yeah. toys made their way to Italy. That's what we found out yeah. through the t wonders of Toy Spon Tour. Italy is the place to go if you want silly toys. And this, this is something we've never seen before on Toy Spon Tour. And I think if you were a normal, you'd never want to see it again. It's <laughs> dreadful, but I really like it. It's just so cool. June from obviously Terry and June, the UK. Um, <laughs> The June figures are something which is, they're always really, they're really good figures and we can spot a lot of the different, like with the Thundercats, they use, reuse that for Thundercats for the Tusker Warrior, or the Sardaukar Warrior, he's always one that people tend to like. He's a little bit welding mask though, isn't he? I don't know. But the, the highlight of any collection is, of course, the Sandworm, which we're not going to get this down from here, but it has an unusual shape, let's say. Uh, and uh, therefore it is one of those toys of law, much like the E.T. finger. It's one of those things where people will look at it and tend to uh, give a little titter. So yeah, shout out for the sandworm. That's a, an actual, really just a terrible, terrible toy because it really doesn't do anything, but it is always the source of amusement. And that's, I think, that sort of, that's not a bad thing for a toy, just to be something of amusement because it should be fun. Wow. The 
this is the main event. This is what I've come to see was this amazing Battlestar collection because there are some absolute belters in here. So take us through it from top to bottom. The rarest item is the land ram. Yeah. Uh, there's a graded land ram there that's complete. I mean, unbelievably rare because they only made it in Canada in small quantities. Yeah. Uh, to find one that's complete is very, very difficult because I think my favorite is actually maybe this, which is just a modern model kit, but I got it signed by Jamie Bamber as Apollo on that side. And then Katie Sackoff, wow. who's star back on that side as well, because uh, that was a bit of a highlight meeting Katie Sackoff. Yes. Um, but I also love this, the, the, the Lasermatic rifle was the thing that took me the longest to find. That's one of my so, favorite things. Yeah. So the toy this is based on is super cool as well. It's all analog, isn't it? So yeah. it sounds, the sounds yeah. on it are fantastic. Yeah. They've got that real sort of moog sort of sound. It's like really, really cool. No, I do love them. I've set stun, Captain. Oh, beam. Oh, running around with that. Yeah. This bit on its own does look a little bit like um, like one of them sort of air, <laughs> air purifiers you get in your loo. Blade solid, eliminates odors and conditions the air. <laughs> They're brilliant. Oh, it's just fantastic to see. So it's got, got all the figures there. The four at the top are the ones that are the harder ones yeah. to find. That's the series two ones. Yeah. Fantastic. The Space Alert game that's at the top as well. It's not LCD, it's LED. No, they've got um, that But it's just smell, so clever. They? Yeah. Analog. And the Cylon Raider at the bottom was actually the first thing I ever bought from your store. Wow. I didn't even know you existed at the time. Somebody said, oh, Leicester Toy Store's got one. I love that LEM lander, and that's really cool. And a lot, a lot of these bits I have had to source from America. Yeah. If you see that online, it is. You know, it's just something to sort of marvel at because we never saw it here. We never ever saw no. it. It came out just after Star Wars, and it was something that was on TV and you could watch it every single week. So you know, Star Wars wasn't very accessible in those days because you you went to the cinema, you saw it, and then it wasn't in the cinema anymore. Whereas this, like, I can't remember how many episodes, like twenty four episodes or something like that in the in the series, and you could just watch it every single week. And I just absolutely fell in love with it. Such a cool thing that is. That was about the only uh, decent episode of Galactica 1980 actually was the last one where it was Starbuck Returns, where it was him and a Cylon on a planet together. Amazing. Gary, you've got some items for me to have a look at, Lee. Yeah, so, well, I guess we'll what are you interested in? Or is well, it just... I don't know. I've seen it. I'm, I know what you've you've got a couple of things to one side for me. And I've got a couple of things to show you as well. Yeah, yeah. I've got um, the A team slot car racing yeah. set and the Buck Rogers ship. Yeah. So they're they're in a box in the lounge. Vintage lunch boxes. I don't know if that's something. That's, yes. Have a look at them. Um, so Definitely. Got a tin can alley there. So, so this is stuff I've been pulling out the loft. I always wanted one of those as a kid. Yeah. It was such an amazing game, but it was so expensive. Yeah. I could never get it. Now I've got it. It's great putting stormtroopers on the top of it and shooting it and making the stormtroopers drop off. Well, even a rifleman sometimes misses. In Can Alley, for real target practice at home. Well, that answers the question of does it work. So we've got Tin Can Alley. Yeah. Alien um, Queen. Alien Queen, yeah. Can we get a big bundle deal going here? I would imagine so. There's an entire box of die cast here. Nice original, that is. A power loader there. What do you want for the Tinker Alley and the lunch boxes? Um, Clash the Titans is going to be 100. Yeah. The rest of them, I could do 40 on each of them. Okay. Okay. We could add that up and uh, so I think, a what about the tinker alley? Probably looking somewhere around 150 for it. Oh, I'll probably leave the tinker alley at that. The the thermoses and, and flat, the, the, I'm interested in those. I think we need to sort our deal on those. This is, look at that, that's lovely. Look at the colours, man. That's a stunner. So cool with old Bob. That, you know, that. That's really special. I love that. Look at it. Beautiful. 
I'm sold on the thermoses. I like them. I want to do a deal on the thermoses. Right. I'll be interested in that box as a whole. Yeah. You guys are giving me a price on that box. I'll be interested in that. I quite like the, the Spider-Man Vampire Wars. That tends to sell quite nicely these days. I think for the entire box, 150. 150 yeah, that's exactly right. Okay. We said it exactly the same time. There you go. So 150 quid. That's sound. Happy with that. Happy days. First deal done. Now then, can you sort me out your very best price on the th on the? It's going to be 300, and I'll chuck in the starter at one for free. Yeah. So 300 up to 450. Yeah. I've got the A team set down there, which was 100. 100. So that's yeah. 450. Let's get that. And out, all the extra cars with it as well. Yeah, which yeah. Was, which was lovely. Yeah. 450. Yeah. And then the 130 for the Buck Rogers. So we've got stars. And then we've got this Maximilian, which is unused. Yeah. What did you have on those? I've got 150 on stars. Right. And I've got two on max. Right. So you've got 350. Okay. Apparently, there's some stuff in here that we can buy. Most of it can be for sale because the house we're moving to is half the size of this one. And I'm very much, if I can't display it, I'm not really sure the point in having it because I don't see the point in just having boxes in the loft. So I'll just give you my bank account now. <laughs> <laughs> oh so my the, life. Air wolf. It's gonna have to be a good number. What number? 300. I'll do 250 on it. I'll meet you in the middle, 275. Yes, that's deal done. Right, that's mine, 275. We need to write this down. This is going to get exciting, people. The thing is, I've enjoyed it for a long time. Um, the only thing that concerns me is we haven't exchanged contracts yet. Um, and, <laughs> and so there's always that chance things um, could fall through. But well, I'll tell you what, if, if you have to buy it back, stuff to replace it. I'll, do, I'll do it the same price for you, all right? So we just swap money for a bit. How much is the 18 lot as a bundle with the bad guys, the good guys? 250. 250. Bad guys, good guys, all this stuff here. 250, yeah. Thank you. The $6 million man. I'll sell all of them apart from the $6 million man and the bionic woman. But so for Oscar and the Maskatron. So everything in there apart from. Apart from the two middle pieces. The two pieces, middle everything. pieces, 200. Yeah, that's fine. These are one of them things that I don't particularly, they're cool, but they're... Yeah, I think you're probably not gonna wanna buy them. Yeah. 600. Definitely not gonna wanna buy them. Mash, set of seven. I reckon they've, they've gotta be looking individually like 100 quid each. Yeah. So 500 for the set. And you've got 100 quid's worth of GW acrylic there as well. Yeah. Because when are you ever going to see them again? Five. Five, yeah, I wouldn't go any lower. No, I'm not going to ask you to go no, lower. Especially not with a hundred quid's worth of acrylic there as well. I'll do it. I'll do the five. Okay. Put it on your list. Do you back with the Stormtrooper for a ton? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a buyer of that. What about Star Trek helmet? Well, I go on, how much is, go on, how much is that? Well, well, you give me a price on that. No, because I've no, I've never seen it. Yeah. You know. And you probably I, never will again. I know. It's, I mean, um, quite rightly, no one bought it because it was flipping awful. It's, it's just the most ridiculous. <laughs> I it, love it because it's so bad. Even the dogs getting tired of the negotiations here, look. In the land of Nod. To be honest, it's the box and the toy is the... So 250, I think I wouldn't go any lower yeah. than that because I'm never ever going to get that again. I am definitely leaving that rubbish behind, <laughs> yeah. even as much as I love it and admire it, I'm leaving that behind. And I, I love it for the same reason, yeah, yeah. because it's so bad. The AHI Star Trek Phaser Ray Gun. 80 quid. 80 quid? Yeah, I love that. Okay. Yeah, it's really nice. It's really nice and, uh, you know, Got to treat yourself to a bit of AHI stuff, haven't you? And that bubble, they're normally absolutely nailed. They're so, so fragile. That one's nice. Bought some great stuff, man. A lot to be liked. Just added up what you owe me. How much is it? 
1,585. Is that including the 330? Yeah, yeah, that includes the 1,585. We'll have to do some fancy shooting and move some money around. That's your lunch for every day of the week there. This is just today. <laughs> Fragile, handled with care, just like me after today's buying trip. It's been great fun. Thanks, Gary. It's good seeing you again. Hope the move goes well, mate. You. And uh, you, uh, you enjoy up, up north. Yeah. And uh, I suppose next time I see you, it'll be a lot further for me to travel. Yeah, well, so if it goes through, I might give you another ring before I go. Good man. Yeah. Well, we're always up for that, aren't we, people? <laughs> Buy some more toys. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Gary. Minute star. Right. On the road. Well, I did not see that coming. I didn't expect to go and see a collection and buy that many toys, but you know, hey, we've lightened Gary's load for his move. So it's win-win. Everyone's happy. Speaking of happy, go and see Gavin Stell at Lost in Toys as well. Shop's amazing. So we hope you've enjoyed the show. We've enjoyed bringing it to you. I'm off back to the shop to sell some of these lovely toys to you guys. So yeah, we'll see you again soon for another Toy Shop on Tour. Da, 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 da.